Do you want this in it? Yeah, can I stand Yeah, you can stand there. Great. Um, for those of you who don't know, Triad is um, a local group made up of volunteers from different um, locations, and they advocate for law enforcement um, and senior citizens. Um, back in 2000, the group went to the Monroe County Solid Waste Department, and they had this idea that they wanted to try to keep medications out of the hands of grandchildren who um, would come to the senior's house and might want to look through the medicine cabinet for something that they could play with. And, um, and also environmental problems with uh, getting into the water and the landfill. So to our surprise and happiness, uh, Linda Thompson and Scott Morgan were very excited about us partnering. And we did so um, from 2001 through 2009. And I wanted to tell you what exciting things happen, and, and it points to what wonderful things are going to happen when this other program gets off the ground. Um, we had, in between 2001 and 2009, 1,646 pounds of controlled substances submitted and 1,955 pounds of solid and liquid medications for a total of 3,601 3, pounds of medications kept out of the water and landfill in the hands of criminals. We also collected um, some mercury thermometers a few years and got 1,137 of them. So we know it works. And um, part of our original goal was to educate the public uh, about medications and what, what happens when they get into the wrong hands or uh, aren't disposed of pro properly. And um, we met that goal with the help of, again, the Monroe County Solid Waste Department. And I wanted to pass out to you the information and a sample of the kind of things that, um, the kind of publicity that we were giving everybody. Chris Gall joined the triad when he was elected office uh, to office, and it was the best thing that ever happened to Triad. He's full of great ideas and was really concerned about losing the medical disposal um, program. And you saw that he's initiated a new program, and we were, we're going to be very proud to work with him and the Monroe County Solid Waste Department to educate the public. Um, we're just really excited about being part of this program. and and looking forward to helping out with this. Thanks a lot. And we also have with us today Dr. Owen Slaughter, who is the Director of Emergency Services here at IU Health Bloomington Hospital. I'm very pleased that he could be here today. Thanks, Chris. Um, I'd like to echo Sheriff Kennedy's um, praise for Chris for getting this done. Um, a lot of people have good ideas, a lot of people have good intentions, but actually getting something done is what's the key, and he has managed to do that well. Um, the, other, the other thing I just wanted to say, Chris used the statistics that we helped get for him to talk about the number of people and, and what's happening. What I deal with is the reality of you know, intubating a 17-year-old who took stuff out of the medicine cabinet that was leftover pain medicine that had been there for three years, and they didn't really know what it was, or they go to, they, they get stuff from friends who've taken it out of the medicine cabinet. And this is, to say it's not uncommon is to downplay it. This is a common, not every day, but at least almost a week, I would say a weekly experience, if not more often in the emergency department. So I'm seeing the people that are really affected by this. I think it's a wonderful idea to get the drugs somewhere where they can be safely protected. The other side of this is my mother-in-law died of pancreatic cancer. And she died and left tons of um, 
narcotics because she died faster than they thought she was going to. And I was a medical professional in the community and I could not figure out how to get rid of these drugs. I mean, there was no option available other than waiting for a timed period where you could go for a very short period of time and dump them off and you had to remember to do it, you had to have everything put together. Um, it's a, it, we did ultimately get it done, but it, we, it sat around for like six months in our home, which is not a good idea. So I think from many different directions in my own personal experience, things is wonderful, really excited about it. And uh, once again, I'm grateful that Chris managed to get this done. Thanks a lot, Chris. Thank you, Dr. Slaughter. Uh, John Langley with the City of Bloomington Utilities Department, the, the Deputy Director. Good morning. <clears throat> Well, first of all, I'd like to say uh, it's really an honor to be here among uh, the leading professionals uh, on this issue. In uh, George Goebel, I think, put it best one time when he said, all the world is a tuxedo and I'm kind of a pair of brown shoes. But I might be one of the most appreciative people uh, in the room uh, for what this brings to me. It brings to City of Bloomington Utilities an alternative. So we'd like to thank the parties that um, have worked uh, to put this program together. We encourage you to continue thinking in this vein uh, and the community to continue thinking in this vein. Um, a vast majority of wastewater treatment plants across the nation are aware of but unable to treat the kinds of compounds that we're talking about today. Not only uh, controlled substances, but other pharmaceuticals which uh, we do not have the ability to treat. The fate of those become a uh, pass-through of our wastewater treatment plants and ret are returned back to the environment because the technology is not there yet and at this point quite unaffordable. So we have partnered with the Solid Waste District and others in the community uh, over a number of years to promote a concept called pollution prevention, essentially just meaning that if you don't put it in the waste stream, you don't have to worry about treating it later. And I think a lot of people who are familiar with this business will agree with me. It's a lot cheaper, a lot more economical, and a lot more effective to take objectionable, objectionable substances uh, out of the, the uh, waste stream uh, before uh, we have to spend the money to retrieve them. Incredibly more efficient economically. So, um, the other message I'd like to send is that this is not just a looming problem. It is uh, national and I suspect international. Uh, and it's not coming, folks, it's here. Uh, there are studies which point up obvious uh, impacts on aquatic life and on the environment. When you pass this through, it goes back into the environment, back into water sources, and becomes available for other treatment, some water treatment plants, uh, drinking water plants, uh, as well as downstream um, well users and that sort of thing. So it gets to the environment. So thank you very much uh, for the opportunity to, uh, to be part of this. And uh, I'll turn it back to you. And then finally, we have Scott Morgan from Solid Waste District. Good afternoon. I want to thank Chris um, and all the partners involved because as Georgia mentioned, we started looking at this about 10 years ago, um, 2001. So today's launch is really the efforts of, of 10 years worth of, of dialogue and discussion and, and all that. So this is a very exciting day for us because um, this answers the question, what can we do on a year-round basis with controlled substances? We had had some part-time solutions for the non-controlled, but this really gives us a year-round solution for the controlled substances. So we're really excited about this. 
the Solid Waste District is very much excited to be a drop-off location for this because we interact with a lot of these customers. Um, they're bringing other materials to us. They can simply bring their controlled substances now. We have a safe disposal option for them. So we're really excited to be a disposal drop-off location for these materials. This program really falls in line with the district's environmental message, our mission. And, and like John said, our mission is to keep things out of the waste stream. As he mentioned, and John and I have talked about this a lot of different times, it is so much easier and cheaper to deal with things on the front side, basically keep them out of the waste stream, than deal with them on the back side, meaning treat them. So this is really a win-win situation from an environmental point of view for a lot of different parties and a cheaper uh, solution for this product, project. The other thing I want to mention, and I've talked a lot about this over the years, and that is this is a bottom-up solution to the problem versus a top-down. And what I mean by that is we don't have the federal government, state government, or even local government really telling us in solving this problem. What we're doing today is a result of a bunch of local entities getting together and creating a solution. And we've talked a lot about this in a lot of meetings I've had over the years, not only in the state of Indiana, but all over the country. And a lot of people have looked for the solution to come from the feds or the state governments, and it's simply not there. So we, we all should be congratulated because we have taken it upon ourselves to attempt to solve or, or, or minimize this problem by everyone's activities. And for that, I'm grateful to you all for your participation. Thank you. Thank you. And now there's one final thing to do, and that is to ask Mac to come up here for the ceremonial handing over of the keys. And when I, when I give these keys to Mac, the program will be in his hands, and he will be the one responsible for doing this on a day-to-day -day basis. Thank you, Mac. And then we have a lot of expertise gathered in this room from, from many different stakeholders. And so if there are any questions from the audience, um, feel free to ask. Many stakeholders in the audience as well. Yes? So the site's officially open today? They're, they, are, they are open. They are, they are ready to go. Uh, they are secured. The video cameras are operational. And uh, we're ready to start taking medications. It's on the poster there, um, solid, the Solid Waste District, uh, Monday through Saturday, 7.30 a.m. to 5 p.m. Oh, sorry, Tuesday through Saturday. And uh, the, the hospital lobby is open 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Any other questions? Georgia. No, this is for all pharmaceuticals. We, we thought it'd be too complicated to try and get people to sort through things. Although there are some instructions you can see there on the right. Uh, we're not taking syringes or mercury thermometers and we're telling people where they can take those things to the solid waste district. Those, those are the instructions there on the right hand side of the poster. The posters are available on a table, uh, well actually the table out in the lobby. And uh, there are press releases on the table as well, and that press release will be going out today. Thank you very much for your attendance and support.